welcome back to What's New with Mead. We're in episode number 34, and I have Mandy from Faywood Mead with me today, here to chat about Mead, her YouTube channel, and everything else in her world. Welcome, Mandy. Glad you're here. Thank you. I'm excited. Well, I have been, um, I've seen your channel around for a while. You've been making Mead, uh, at least on the YouTube sphere, for a little less than a year, right? slightly over now so okay. yeah i looked it up the other day actually and it was may 21st was my like official youtube launch sweet so over a year in and i, I remember seeing your stuff and um i was I, i've always enjoyed getting more people getting into the youtube world um because it, it it's fun to see other people's things and it's also mm -hmm. great to see the world of mead expanding. So I'm glad that you are creating content. And uh, of course, well, we're going to hear from Mandy about all of her things today. But specifically, if you want to check her out, there's links in the description, or you can just type Faywood Mead into the internet and you will find her. So um, let's go ahead and get started. I want to kind of talking about your history with YouTube slash mead making. What can you tell us about your backstory? Where'd you start? Well, with YouTube, actually, I had a vlogging channel for a couple of years, like a few years ago. So I already sort of had an introduction into the world of YouTube. Uh, and of course, that channel just fell off <laughs> and died. So, you know, I remade this one. Um, but I think that's part of what gave me the courage to start this channel to begin with is because mm -hmm. I'd already pushed myself to kind of do it before. Uh, as far as Mead goes, you know, I've wanted to make it for years now. Like, I, I don't even know for how long I've wanted to brew. And I would tell my parents over and over and over again, like, I really want to learn how to do this. How do you do it? It's so cool. You know, because growing up, they made beer. And oh. my mom was more of the mead maker than my dad. Uh, he was more, he's a beer guy. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. So I just waited until he had equipment to give me. Um, I didn't realize how easy it actually is and how like little equipment you need. Like I thought that you had to have the huge, you know, five gallon glass fermenters that were like mm -hmm. $60 or whatever it is. I just assumed it was gonna be really expensive. And I didn't even think to look at YouTube either until after I'd already started. Mm -hmm. which is probably why my first meads are so bad. <laughs> They're awful. Let me just tell you right now. They're still bad a year later. Um, yeah, so that's just kind of how I got going. I looked at the internet for recipes. Yeah. Mostly. Do you remember your first recipe you made? Yeah. <laughs> it's so <laughs> bad. Oh, my gosh. So it... It was a, I think it was like a sort of a triple berry kind of thing, mm. right? So I think it was blueberries, blackberries, maybe raspberries, but I didn't add enough fruit. Mm. I also didn't add any nutrients at all. So I was just like, okay, here we go. This is how you make me, you know? And I just yeah. like put, I think I used two pounds of honey. And I was like, oh, this is going to be enough. And I put two pounds in there and my fruit all in primary and let it go. And then of course I would let it sit for a couple of months and then I'd try it and I was like, wow, this is like very fusely and <laughs> yeah. dry and like just super hot. And I was like, oh my God, this is awful. So I add a little bit more honey and a couple months later, a little bit more. So I think I like, I don't know, those poor yeasts. I feel so bad for them. Those I think they were so stressed <laughs> that they're like, yeah. No thanks. Well, yeah. so it's funny you mentioned the equipment side because when I first started, um, that was one of my re main things for wanting to do mead was how little equipment you had to have. I looked at beer brewing and uh, I was like, oh, you have to have this and this and this. And there's like eight ingredients to start. I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. this is overwhelming. So I, I found mead and I was like, oh, it's honey and water and yeast and you just let it go. And so that's kind of like the lazy side of me popping out pretty quick but um it's i mean it's how i kind of got started it's really I interesting 
it's really interesting you mentioned your family being involved in brewing. Um, I, mm -hmm. I don't always hear that from people. A lot of times it's like self-discovery of me, kind of like my instance of uh, just self-interest. So you yeah. said your both your parents brewed, home brewed. Mm -hmm. And your mom yeah. was more of a mead maker. Yes. So, oh my God, I found this out like last week, but my grandpa on my dad's side was a moonshiner. Wow, it goes York. all the way back. Yeah, it goes way back. And unfortunately, all of his recipes died with him. But mm. my dad said that he had like a full still and everything. And I think he made beer too. Oh, and oh my God, something else really cool. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I'm just, like so hyped. Um, so I got this cookbook from my family, uh, my grandma. I don't know. It's all my dad's side. Okay, so it's like 14 kids, poor po uh, Polish immigrants. Okay, so, it, you know, it's just a whole thing. But anyways, so it's this, like, Jewish cookbook, because they're Jewish Poles. I don't know. And, um, and in the very back is a recipe for mead, and I spelled it wrong. It's M-E-D. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> no wonder I just glossed over this M-E-D, because I, like, didn't notice it for forever. Um, but really cool. So I don't remember all of the ingredients, but it's that classic kind of like you throw it all in a pot and you boil it and then you mm -hmm. put it in your fermenter. Um, but I know it has like sage and hops oh. and yeah, it just seems really interesting. It's more of a methaglin style mm -hmm. and the instructions is to like put it in a barrel. And I think seven weeks later is when you take it out and bottle okay. it. Okay. Have yeah. you made it before or have you, no. have you plans to make it? I am planning on making it. Yeah, yeah. I haven't. I mean, I just discovered it in this book not long ago, so wow. pretty exciting. That's super. I definitely. I would love to see a video on that because that is like those uh, older recipes. Of course, they're mm -hmm. the uh, methods are a little bit different than our current stuff, but mm -hmm. it'd still be interesting to see something like that come to life, um, especially with it being spelled. Spelled. Maybe that was intentional spelling of it. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe M E D. Uh, yeah, and I know I just talked about everyone except my parents, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, my, my parents brewed too, and I remember when I was little, God, how old was I? I don't know, my brother was like a, a little bit, I don't know, he was like three or four. Well, let's just say four, he was talking, and they had put um, their carboy of beer in the bathtub, so okay. I guess... You know, if it foams over, hey, it's in the bathtub, easy cleanup. Right. And I just remember it smelled awful to me. <laughs> and I compared it to cherry pie, like rotten cherry pie. Okay. Huh. <laughs> I don't know why. And I have this memory in my head of smelling rotten cherry pie. Interesting. Out of huh. a glass, out of a, a giant glass bottle. Yeah. yeah. So do, really? they, do they still brew at this point? My dad doesn't. Uh, okay. his, yeah, his back is not great. So mm. that's why he sent me all of his stuff. I'm like, well, you could just brew in like gallon batches, dad. Yeah. Maybe. But, <laughs> you don't have to do five gallons. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to do these huge things, dad. Um, but my mom does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do both beer and mead. So do you swap? bottles very often do you bring stuff over and share it with them no never so my parents are in idaho oh okay and i'm in virginia so you know there's like a 3500 mile difference a small small space between you two <laughs> just a little bit um yeah i don't know and i hadn't thought of shipping bottles to her before but i think i should because mm -hmm. she needs to try it you might have to load up on like next time you go home, just like take a whole case. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah. Like now that I'm into it, it's not mm -hmm. just me sitting there and like drinking mom's mead. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it would be a totally different experience now. And I haven't been to visit her in a long time. So. Uh -huh. Man. Yeah. Well, that's, that's so cool. cool. I, um, I don't have that background. My family didn't uh, really didn't, definitely did not brew and didn't really mm -hmm. drink a lot. I kind of grew up and my family was like, if my parents had a, a Coors light at, you know, a seven, seven o'clock and in the evening, like they were like, we're not even going to think about driving for 12 hours. So I grew up and I was like terrified of, of everything because I was like, 
man, you know, if you touch a cruise light, you're just dead. Just don't even <laughs> consider driving. So, oh, no. yeah, I, I mean, I went through my own discovery of alcohol phase and those things, but then uh, wanting to just brew it kind of came to that world. So I'm, I'm the only one in my family who brews. So I think it'd be fun to have people around what? that also brew. It'd be interesting. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I will say. I do wish that I had friends closer to me who brewed, especially when I first started. That was something that, well, that was another lead into my YouTube channel, actually. It was like, I wanted more of a community. I want to be able to talk to people without driving them crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like just talking about brewing all the time. Like, oh my God, I want to make this and this and this. And they're like, I don't, I don't care or understand. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it was really cool getting on this platform and like immediately other mead people just find you. Mm -hmm. which is really cool our little community is pretty tight-knit it's uh it's kind of nice to be especially nowadays now there's more um mm -hmm. pretty much anytime somebody starts a channel there's somebody grabs you underneath their wing is like hey all right welcome to our world which is you don't always see that with lots of communities which is kind of nice no yeah not at all i yeah i guess depending on the community things can be a little bit more petty competitive mm -hmm. maybe so it is nice to have just this like friendliness mm -hmm. um from other creators yeah so um let's talk a little bit about you've been making mead for um well i guess that's a question how long have you been making mead for since the channel started or is it prior to the channel a little bit before that so okay. i think a total of like a year and a half Cool. Have you? Not very long. That's not very. But that's enough time to get some some meads underneath your belt and kind of experiment. So, have you found a? Um, do you like a certain style at this point? Or are you still just kind of grabbing around trying to figure out which one would be your favorite? I'm definitely still experimenting a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to say if I have. So yeah, as I'm thinking, it's hard to say if I have an absolute favorite. I think of like a favorite <laughs> in my uh -huh. head. So it's the first mead that I have recreated. It's still sitting and hanging out. Mm -hmm. And it's the one that I turn into mead stampede. Oh. Fingers crossed is my mulberry blueberry. Sweet. That's exciting. It has a very, I don't know, the, the flavor is just really unique. It's very like wine Mm -hmm. Like, I don't really know how to explain it because it's, it's just the combination of the mulberry and blueberry together is like, just really good. I don't know. Yeah. So I would say that one's number one. And then I do want to experiment more with apple meads. I really enjoyed the shushan that I made mm -hmm. with the buckwheat honey and the apple. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Those buckwheat honey. Really this is a... I know you're kind. like, what do I do with all this buckwheat honey, right? What have you oh, yeah. come up with? What are you doing? Well, I just made a big boche. I just used about five and a half, almost six pounds of it for a boche. Um, and then I still have 15 pounds. So I'm honestly, <laughs> I found that it mixes in really well with other, I mean, when you, when you're mixing honey styles, I have a, uh, a meat I made with, God, it's been a long time since I made it now blackberry and clover and some buckwheat and i did like different ratios just a small amount of buckwheat mm -hmm. and of course buckwheat is strong uh so mm -hmm. it, it didn't need i didn't need much to be prominent but i found that it mixes well with things and of course i'm still experimenting to find um maybe a a more solid buckwheat recipe that uses more honey but I, I'm holding on to it for now. I'm not trying to throw it all away because I don't plan on buying a bunch of buckwheat and thankfully it doesn't go bad. So I could hold on to it forever, theoretically. Yeah. So speaking of that, do you have any favorite honeys you like? Love Orange Blossom, for mm -hmm. sure. I think I've used that one the most, Orange Blossom. I don't know. There's just a flavor that's just really fantastic. I... I've never tried meadow foam though. That's worth a try. You should, if you and get a I, hold of some. I feel like that would probably top the list because it's like <laughs> one of everybody's favorites is meadow foam, right? Yeah. It's like also one of the hardest, well, I won't say hardest to get 
in in bulk it's pretty tough to get and so it's like one of those where if you get a chance to try it or use it you're like yes i want to use it so i had to get mine online i'd recommend trying it if you can um what what kind of honeys are available to you in virginia that you know of at least (laughs) (laughs) um i think it's mostly just wildflower and clover I'm trying to get a hold of a local honey. I'm try- trying. I emailed so many people. No yeah. one got back to me. And then mm. there's like one place because my favorite meadery that's local. I said they're my favorite. I haven't really like gone to very many meaderies, but also they're amazing anyway. Mm-hmm. And that's Blackheath. Just, I don't know, Blackheath meadery. But anyways, the honey that they get I figured it out and I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to go in there and then I'm going to find some a, a big old bucket. And I look online and it was like $250 for five gallons. And I was mm. like, that's like buying Dutch gold with shipping. Yeah. But do they ship it to you or is that you're still having to go? I have to go get it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the tough thing about honey in bulk is you're going to spend the money. Like I, I don't think I've spent less than... 230 bucks on on uh 60 pounds so it's it's a little bit tough to get but if you use it well wisely you can get longevity out of it yeah that's true i'd recommend though uh i, I do like dutch gold there's another one called crystals honey that's also very good if you're interested oh, in I haven't that. Had them. uh-huh and then what was the other one there's one oh i just lost it shoot oh flying bee ranch it's a uh, another one, and it, they have a bunch of really interesting varietals. I got pumpkin blossom, coriander, um, cranberry. They have orange blossom. They have buckwheat. They have a bunch that are on their website. So, and they're online. That's a good way to do it. And it's it's a little bit pricey, I'll be honest, but you can get some really yeah. weird varietals. Yeah, because I I'll often uh, go to Etsy for stuff too. Mm. Like that's where I got most of my beginning honeys until I like. Um, I did get a five gallon bucket from Dutch gold and then um, I got some from a place called Gardner bees, Mm -hmm. which is pretty good. Um, Yeah. I don't know. That's interesting. Cause I, I would love to experience more varieties. Oh, there was another one I wanted to try called um, Holly honey. Oh, I've heard, I've heard about it. I haven't tried it before. Yeah. I remember trying to find it and I, just I just couldn't I think because mm-hmm. it's just one of those weird varieties but what does it taste like I think it I think they said it tasted kind of like butterscotch maybe or oh had like interesting a, yeah like a really cool buttery flavor I was like this oh. looks dope I want to try that now, I've tried uh somebody asked me the other day uh, about the honeys I've tried and so I started going down this list and I've I've probably tried 15 to 20 at this point which is really cool and it's interesting because, um, you know, I'm sure you felt this too. When you first get into mead making and you have about this much knowledge of honey, you're like, oh, I mean, the honey bear. Like you go get a honey bear and you go do that. Or you go and yeah. you go to Costco and you get the, the Kirkland brand, whatever, that's yeah. wildflower. But then people start talking about orange blossom and you're like, wait, hold on. Oh, I mean, this has orange flavors. And the next thing you know, you're down in pumpkin blossom land and you're like what the heck (laughs) pumpkin yeah oh i what does that taste like what does pumpkin taste like uh uh, i tried it a while back and now i i can't remember the top of my head it's not pumpkin i'll tell you that it is not like yeah i was thinking in my head i was like it's gonna taste like you know uh, when you hear that you're like it's gonna taste like actual pumpkin it's not it's it's a little bit spice spicy not very like bright floral so but it's one i'm going to use soon for a project so Mm -hmm. uh, i'm excited to try that i'd recommend those if you're interested in some online sources that uh, are nice of course buying locally but my local people i went in like you did to go find some local stuff and the the uh, guy at the farmer's market wanted four hundred dollars for a five gallon uh bucket and i was like oh listen I like I like you, but I can't. I cannot pay four hundred dollars for sixty oh, pounds. So wow, that's crazy. Yeah. So I've I've not done the local thing, and I feel bad saying that. But also, I can make more mead if I don't 
go as local. So somebody's going to be mad yeah. at me for that. <laughs> All right. So I want to talk to you. Okay. <laughs> Do you what? Oh, I just said we wish. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> We're trying our best. Okay. So I want to ask you about kind of, um, we talked a little bit about the start of YouTube channel. What's your mm-hmm. inspiration between or behind uh, Faye Wood? Like what, what gave you that name? Has that been around in your world? What's the start? Or right. So it's a new name. Mm-hmm. I now in the moment, I don't know, there's kind of two sides to this story because it's like there's the surface level and then there's the deeper level, mm-hmm. right? Like, so Faye Wood, I wanted something mystical because um, I'm really into that kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. I just thought addressing like a fairy wood would really open up fun doors for naming my meads as well as designing labels. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the surface level. Um, oh my God. I'm like, do I want to tell this story? <laughs> <laughs> so this is like, hey, Amanda, how's it going? Nice to meet you. Um, so once upon a time, I, I, don't know, I was a teenager. I was like 17 or something, right? And my whole life growing up, all I did was art. I just drew mm-hmm. all the time. I wanted to be a graphic novel artist. Um, I was going to go to college for fine art, which I did, but I had a mental breakdown and quit. So there's that. But so my mom, oh my God. Uh, So do you know Amy Brown? Do you remember that Mm, artist, Amy Brown? I don't. She, She was more known in like the new age world. So Mm -hmm. she would draw fairies, Mm -hmm. that was fairy art. And she started off with like just pen and paper and then she moved up to like watercolors and Mm. um, I don't know, people were obsessed with her art, right? And it was was everywhere, at least in, I don't know, middle-aged mom (laughs) stores. (laughs) I feel like that's who really liked the art, Um, speaking of my mom. And so she would just like come into my room, (laughs) sorry. I'm like thinking about it. Okay. <clears throat> so she would just like come into my room. And she's like, Mandy, you need to do this. You can draw how she draws. You can sell this. You know, you, you can go out there and be a, a professional artist and go sell oh. fairy art. And I was like, okay. It's a hype so how right do there. I do that? <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, mom, how do I do that? And she's shut my door you know it's like i don't know just do it <laughs> I'm like, what how do i do this i'm literally sitting here drawing on printer paper mm-hmm. i'm like you know because we we're pretty poor i don't know at this point my mom was a single mom and so for i kid you not like a month straight she <laughs> the story's actually really awful but it's funny but it's awful so for a month straight she would like I don't know, anytime she could give me a loan. So like she would trap me at the dinner table or she would just throw open my door because she wasn't the kind of person to knock. Uh-huh. So she'd just throw open my door and be like, what are you drawing? Are you drawing yet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what are you drawing over here? And if it wasn't fairies, she'd be like, oh, why are you wasting your time on this? You know, and I'm like, mom. Like, okay, <laughs> everyone has to practice art. Like you're not just brilliant at it. You have to practice, right? But because I wasn't drawing professional fairy art, let me tell you. And she, so, oh my God. So she would like, one of the things she would do is she would mime things to me. Okay. Mime, is that the right word? She would act things out. Uh Oh my goodness. So she would come into my room or whatever She's like, Mandy, I have this great idea for fairy art. I was like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) What if you do a fairy like this? (laughs) Sitting on a mushroom and she's like, she would act out. She would like make faces. And I'm like, mom, you're embarrassing me and we're alone. (laughs) So she just did this for, I kid you not, a month straight until I stopped drawing. Uh So they would meet is also sort of a reclamation of power. You know, like there's power in a name, there's power in words. So kind of helping to inspire me, because after that I was just like 
I'm done. Like, no more <laughs> fantasy art. No more fairies. <laughs> I can't yeah. handle this anymore. Um, you know, it, I feel like it would help inspire me to um, draw more uh, and feel, I don't know, good about it. Mm-hmm. Um, making it, but it's for, my, it's for myself. And yeah. um, I don't know, and it would just be fun. So that's that's like the deep end of why that's, a, that's interesting name. i love that though I, I think every every name um uh, especially like that with a good story that like it not only gives you more passion for what you're doing because like like you said you're you're reclaiming the name you're kind of rebranding mm-hmm. in a way like a thing that you've you've wanted to do so i think it's awesome and i, I love the name i think it's uh it is very like for the mead world it is so apropos like this is mead like Faye would mead so he did a great job finding the niche for it thank you nuts i love that um so let's kind of switch a little bit to your your time with youtube i want you because i'm sure that there are many people who are going to listen to this who are inspired um by your story to possibly create a mead youtube channel or a youtube channel As, as you said you did a vlog for a while so you've been in the world uh, what are some challenges that you have seen with starting a YouTube channel now that you're a little over a year in? I mean, the biggest challenge is being seen. Definitely is mm-hmm. going to be, is going to be the biggest challenge. Um, because filming, editing, figuring out your meads. I mean, all of that is fairly easy. I guess finding finding yourself in your videos. Mm -hmm. So like, and I feel like the same with you, where if you watch stuff that's like old stuff that you first made, the vibe in that video Mm -hmm. is gonna be so much different from like your current vibe. Right. And when I started, I kind of thought I would be like, I wanted to go along with sort of a Townsend's theme I don't know if you watch mm-hmm. Townsend's. Mm-hmm. I love him. He's he's so great. He um, it's like a cooking. He does historical stuff, but like the oh, okay. filming is really pretty and like ah, uh, it's very aesthetically pleasing and uh, everything's scripted, right? So I thought, okay, scripting. Like, let's mm-hmm. try doing some of that, but it's hard to do with Mead. I feel like, yeah unless you practice what you're doing a lot, mm-hmm. I think kind of the spontaneity in the moment, like, so I would say advice is to not think too hard about what you're doing, to just do it and have fun with it. And you'll just mm-hmm. find yourself as your videos go along and the more practice you get. It's gonna be a little weird sitting in front of a camera too. If you're not used to it, it's like, oh, this yeah. is awkward. What do I say? Am I like just... <laughs> it's all right. It just changed. It's fine. I'll be slightly all, yellow now. All, YouTube is improv. <laughs> you just got to make it work, like you're saying. Yeah. I'm slightly yellow now. It's fine. Um, but yeah, no, the biggest challenge is definitely being seen. And so going out, and I, I'd say advice for that would be to interact with anyone who comments, obviously, like your mm-hmm. viewers and stuff. You want to interact with them and um talk to other mead makers on youtube like comment on their stuff and kind of community builds as Mm -hmm. as you will and it's funny you say that the uh the scripting thing to me because uh, my first few videos um were not scripted and i I don't think i've ever i've scripted maybe one or two videos and it was like it was it was one that i I wanted, I had to do the, get the timing down right. So I had to say things over and over again to get the timing right, to fit this like eight minute slot I had. So yeah. um, that, and I, I just don't script much. Also when I teach and I have my normal life, I don't, I don't script, everything's off the top of my head. So I just mm-hmm. felt like it was weird for me. But I used to get comments from people who would say, um, you know, you need to script out your stuff because it will be better. I've always been a little leery of it only because yeah. I feel like at that point, unless you practice it, like you said, you're just reading off a of paper. And mm-hmm. that just doesn't seem too personable to me. And of course, 
we want our, our channels to be personable and for people to watch our stuff and see our personality in it, not us holding up a phone and reading off a, you know, a script. It yeah. just doesn't work as well. And of course, like I said, you can practice, you can do that stuff. But mm-hmm. then at some point you're like, you're almost acting. <laughs> so it's like a catch 22. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like scripting might work really well for some people. Like, I don't know if it's something you've done or you feel comfortable, like reading lines basically. Um, mm-hmm. And recording. I mean, I guess if you just recorded your voice after the fact, but in the moment, if you're trying to script and do what you're doing, mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you can't like go back and redo a step. Right. And, you know, if you mess up your script. So it's that flexibility that needs to happen. I did, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of flexibility, especially with, um, especially with brewing and, and mead and, you know, you could expect an outcome and then, mm-hmm. uh, you know, prepare for that orange blossom to taste, you know, have these bright, uh, floral notes and things and then it comes out of primary and you're like well I don't taste that at all and so you kind of have to react and you have to be a part of that and and say mm-hmm. like well this worked or this didn't work and um, there's a realistic side that I feel like we have to uphold to be true uh, at least that's at least my opinion so I haven't scripted things and frankly I don't think that everyone should unless you're doing voiceover stuff in which case you can kind of do that more so work with it yeah so in your YouTube career so far, um, I know you uh, have, you've made a lot of different kinds of meads. Are there anything, any meads that you are, you've already decided, okay, I need to do a, that this is, hold on, how do I phrase this? Are there any meads you want to do it again because you were like, this went really well or vice versa, or you're like, I want to attempt it again because I didn't feel like I had the best, best result. Yes. Mm-hmm. To both of those things, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so I definitely want to rework meads that I like, but I definitely feel like they could be better. And I think so far, the only mead that, my only meads that haven't really worked, I didn't film them to begin with. It was like mm-hmm. my original ones. So there's a recipe that I w- am planning on remaking for my channel. Oh man, this mead was really, I'm like looking at it right now. It's still on this table because I did a year tasting video recently Uh Uh, and it's awful. (laughs) And it's a blackberry lavender vanilla, which sounds Uh like it would be amazing, but I really messed it up and I want to remake it Mm -hmm. and of course film it this time and see how it goes. So how did you, um, how do you your recipe build? What's your your way you go about doing that? Because that's obviously a very interesting flavor profile. Mm-hmm. How did you get to that point? So okay, so what I like to do is I think of something that I like, right, or something that I want to experiment with. So lavender. Okay, well, what goes with lavender? And I will just start typing in Google and see if other people i specifically look like lavender mead lavender you know wine recipe whatever and uh and usually mead forms will pop up or i'll look at wine forms too and kind of see what they did and other pairings that people may have made that's kind of how i figure out a lot of my recipes it's like hmm what would go well with this or there is a mead that i will be making i'm really excited about it's going to be challenging yeah and I thought of that one based on a recipe, on a, not a recipe, duh, uh, dessert. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have a, there's a book that you should definitely get for recipe building. I got to move something real fast. <laughs> I got to move my tower. Uh, it's called the flavor Bible. <gasps> Ooh. You definitely need to get this. This is called the flavor Bible and it is literally just, Food, like what, what pairs with what, essentially. So you could go and find, and it's mainly for cooking, but it, like this says, hold on, let me find an example. Uh, I'm trying to find a fruit. 
juniper berries. Okay, so then it gives you like a, a season, a character of it, a taste, and then it tells you all these things that it pairs with. So juniper berries uh, pair best with allspice, apples, bay leaf, celery, uh, chicken. We, we use that all the time. Uh, you know, stuff, stuff like that. It goes through this list. So this is a, a book I would recommend getting. It's probably like 20 bucks. But if you want to find something that's like, what do I want? What do I, how do I recipe build off this? This might be a good starting point for you. Yeah. Oh my God. I love that. That's so. a great idea. Yeah. I need to get that book. <laughs> and there's that. a couple more. Oh, that's the big one. Um, that I would say for what you're, what you're doing, there's a ton of other mead books in the world, but that one, you made me think of that one talking about recipe building. Recipe building, recipe building is hard, especially if you, <laughs> I mean, even going off of just an idea, like, uh, I really like uh, whatever blackberry lavender uh, cobbler something I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you still have to look at it and go, okay, well, how do I translate that over? And then that you run into the world of like, well, what kind of honey do I use? How do I achieve these things? So mm -hmm. I think it's important that we we all definitely just try things. Mm -hmm. And then, like you just said, with your first year your tasting of it, now you can look back on it and go oh man, that lavender was way strong or whoa, that lavender wasn't strong enough. And, you know, you start mm -hmm. to really kind of ass uh, assess what happened. So, but there's a lot of trial and error in our world, at least. There is definitely, there's a lot. And I mean, even whether you put fruit in primary or secondary, vastly mm -hmm. changes flavors and yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> there's just it, a lot. It, is a it's a multi honestly multi um month if not year process to do it to do it right i mm -hmm. i don't think that means that as us youtubers that we have to only document the one that was the best i think as long as there's a transparency to say hey this is my my first attempt at this or this is you know i'm, I'm recipe building this to, to say that uh, and i didn't do mm -hmm. that all the time when i started i just kind of put out recipes and that's something I wish I had done was kind of give a disclaimer and say, Hey, I do not know 100% that this is the recipe, but it is a recipe yeah. for it. So. True. I know that's something that with my channel, cause I, I don't know. I kind of built my videos around the assumption that people who already know how to make meat or have been doing it will watch. Cause I'm like, Hey, I'm an amateur, blah, blah, blah. But I don't, mm -hmm make those sorts of statements in the beginning and I feel like sometimes people do start making the mead that I started you know and they kind of brew with me a little bit and I've only seen a couple comments that kind of like hint at that mm -hmm. and then I'm sitting here like I hope it's good oh yeah like, I'm done with mine yet how is it gonna be <laughs> you know yeah so it's like warning this is an experiment or like when i do uh finish it mm -hmm. and i rack and then in my description at least you know because people will look for the written recipes and they're like hey where's this recipe like can i have mm -hmm. it and i'm like hey don't know if it's good yeah <laughs> like, maybe it needs to be altered a little bit just uh i think as long as you really put that out know. there though yeah mm -hmm. Cause you just don't know how things are going to turn out unless you're making like a tried and true recipe that you've but had even, for a long time. Even those can be tough though, because like uh, someone can take a Joe's ancient orange, which is arguably one of the biggest ones for us and make it and go, Oh man, that's way too much cinnamon, you know, and say like, I should have used half a cinnamon stick. So it still boils down to a lot of the palate. And like, what do you mm -hmm. like? And what, what really works for you? Not always like what, uh, what works for someone else. So that's where we, I, I suggest at least to even take common recipes and alter them as you might want or need. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody should be yelling and screaming at you. I know that people get mad about Joe's ancient orange. They're like, if you deviate from the recipe, you're a sinner, you know, like you're. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> so, tried it. So I've seen it floating around, of course, but I've never been like, hmm, I need to make that. I've just kind of been like, what is this? <laughs> it's worth a try just to see what the what the hype is about and like 
Um, there are a bunch of those to, to mark off the list and uh, at least to have the experience so that when somebody, you know, you get later on down the line and somebody's like, Hey, I want to make this. You can say, Oh yeah, I made this and I, I liked this about it. Or I didn't like it, especially with, you know, you know, you being in front of a platform of people, it's nice to be able to, to have that experience. That's true. So yeah, people ask all kinds of things. So so let's talk about, we talked about recipe building. Um, is there, I feel like everyone starts and you make a mead that you are like, I either want to keep refining this recipe or this is the, this is the one, this is like my, going to be my house, house mead, repeated mead a lot. Do you have one of those that you are like, you're confident in? Not yet. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would say my my most confidence lies in the mulberry blueberry right now. Um, there are so many other meads that I've, I don't, not so many. I haven't made like that many meads, but mm-hmm. there are some others that turned out really good. However, they were accidentally sparkling, not you know. supposed to be, you know. <laughs> And they were real good like that. And I'm like, yeah. cool. Was that a situation? Uh, did you figure out if that was like you didn't stable or like you stabilized, but then it didn't fully stabilize or you oh, just. No. This was when I wasn't stabilizing. Ah, uh, okay. So I wasn't stabilizing. I was definitely on that train of not adding things. However, I didn't pasteurize either. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, uh, now, oh my God, listen, okay. <laughs> I, I've had so many meads now and I've, I've fairly recently started stabilizing. Um, so that's going to be a whole other challenge in itself is like uh, what to do with older videos or, mm-hmm. you know, uh, when I didn't do these things and now I'm like, okay, <laughs> like this, this is, uh, this is something that's, very good idea to do well i would say um if it's a it's a if it's a situation where it is like an actual safety hazard you know what i mean like you Mm -hmm. like you're you didn't stabilize and then you threw a pound of honey in and you bottled it you know that's like a video i'd be like okay i probably need to put (laughs) need to do something about it but if it's just like a hey i went ahead and bottled this and Mm -hmm. you know obviously uh I guess you have to assess the amount of danger that is there. So yes, as somebody who has, I have like 350 videos now at this point, not every one of them is like a perfect masterpiece has ever existed. So <laughs> there are lots of, lots of them where I'm like, mm, that was a little bit suspect, but yeah, as long as you're truly not teaching someone a, a actual bad habit or creating a dangerous situation, mm-hmm. I think it's okay to keep those up. Yeah, it was, it's so tricky because with all of them that ended up sparkling, the, I waited at least a full month and then I take another gravity reading and mm-hmm. I know on a couple of them, it was like, oh, well it moved like two points, you mm-hmm. know, in a month, like that's nothing, it's fine. Or uh, one of them didn't move at all in a month, but mm-hmm. I made it in cooler weather and then spring came along mm-hmm. and it warmed up. And then it ended up sparkling. Yeah, there's that spontaneous carbonation or, or yeast restarting. That's it's a little annoying, and I think that um, sometimes we do, like you said, think, okay, it's been a month, been four weeks, and nothing's happened. Mm-hmm. When you have it stabilized, there is that the question mark becomes bigger. So there's the risk. It's a is there's risk behind it, but I don't know. I think the stuff you're putting out is, is open and honest. And whenever you do your tastings and things, I'm sure you're able to note like, Hey, this is sparkling. Okay. Hold on. And, and if you have your, your, uh, lineage or I guess of videos saying part one, mm-hmm. part two, part three, most people will get to the end and go, Oh, it was sparkling. I wonder why. Ah, I see. So. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I have a video coming out next Tuesday with Miss Christina. She was with me again and Percy and uh, the rosemary raspberry mead Mm. kind of exploded a little bit on (laughs) and you can see in the thumbnail 
it's very obvious hey. <laughs> what's happening. And it was one of those that like barely moved and it got warm. And then it blew up pretty much. Not a literal bottle bomb, but like, you know, it just, yeah, everywhere. And I think the biggest tragedy is that I lost a half bottle of mead because mm. it was everywhere. Um, but I don't know, it's hard to recreate those means. So the, the issue that I've had is mm. making something that is very popular amongst my friends people really enjoy it. And they're like, Oh my gosh, when are you making more of this? Like my strawberry meat is another one that was accidentally sparkling mm -hmm. and it tastes fantastic, but I'm like, cool. I don't know how to really recreate this because it was an accident. It's yeah. not going to taste the same if I remake it. So mm -hmm. making something that can be consistently repeated is kind of tricky. Uh, at least with how I used to brew without, you know, Stabilizing or having a specific stopping point and knowing exactly how much honey I added and, you know, right. all of that kind of stuff. So and that goes into the documentation side, you know, as you as you recipe create and you go through the process, keeping good notes. And, I, and I've seen your notebook before in your videos, you, you <laughs> reference back to it. So it, you keep good notes, but it's great. No, it, it's a great thing. There have been um, probably one or two meads in my time where I like I was like, I'll just, I'll put it up here. I'll remember exactly what I did and how much. And then a week later, I'm like, uh, I don't remember a thing about this. So yep. always writing down your information, always uh, referring back to it is super helpful. And that helps you adapt. I think that all these recipes you're talking about wanting to recreate could be repeated again uh with your now uh, more knowledge of how to do it how to make something sparkling on a safe way or, or you know how to how to do things intentionally mm -hmm. um it's all just trial and error i think that's that is a lot of our world is what works what doesn't work and then you you say yes or no to it essentially lots of tweaking oh my yeah. gosh i have a i have one recipe that i um i I'm trying to make it my like house basic one and it's a, uh, just a, uh, cinnamon sizer. So it's just real simple, but I've done it probably six times now. And I, I feel confident enough that I could repeat the same recipe and it'd be fine. Um, my next step with it is I, I use apple juice as the base, but then I, I found that if you stabilize and then you put real fruit on top of it, you impart, of course, the apple flavor. Again, you can provide a little tannic value, uh, but it, it retains the sweetness. And so the price of this meat is pretty costly because you're doing apple juice and yeah. three pounds of apples per gallon. So that's one that I'm like, I, I know it works, but now I got to get it down in cost so that I can create mm -hmm. more of it for cheaper. But again, adaptation all the time. Yeah, having a house mead that you can keep around all the time, like, yeah, I don't know. That's tough. I really want to play more with traditionals and a variety mm -hmm. of traditionals because I have only kind of made one, kind okay. of. Yeah. I mean, it had, like, orange, and um, I added, like, raisins and black tea and stuff to it. So it's not, like, a super traditional. I don't it's know. not a show I mead. That, that's a yeah, traditional yeah, that's not a show me yeah i don't the show me stuff i don't know i need to try that sometime it's that is a, that's a whole other world because you're you're so dependent for a show me um you, you for anyone that is wondering a show me is literally honey water yeast you you cannot put anything else in it otherwise it doesn't become a show me so if you put uh, if you oaked it i think i don't know if that's true i don't think you can oak them I, I, that might be a limitation Anyways, I don't know. So you can't put anything else. So you're just so dependent on what the honey provides. And then that just creates a whole bunch of things. Traditionals are hard though. If you are, uh, if you're back sweetening them, they're a little bit easier unless you're just really capping out the yeast. I've found over time that um, 
I don't like the super, super sweet commercial mead. I don't know how much commercial mead you've had, but if you go pick up a bottle of like Chaucer's uh-huh. or something that's like, uh, how do I put it? Medieval fair intro to mead. Mm-hmm. It's, it's honey water essentially is what it is. So it is. Totally. And I'm not a fan of those, but I do need a little sweetness. So uh, I think that spending spending time trying those things to develop your palate and just figure out what you want is important but also just trying a traditional uh is is also uh, very difficult <laughs> it's a hard mead style to, to master i still don't feel like i'm even close at this point yeah i mean i feel like if you kind of i mean yeah you have to like master taking care of your yeast so that they mm-hmm. you know don't make things gross. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then I guess just probably like the right amount of um, ABV and sweetness level. Because mm-hmm. I've definitely had like, I've had a really good traditional that's not too sweet, but you can really taste the honey. And I'm like, how do I do that? Because I have yeah. had Chaucer's. Chaucer's was my first commercial mead. Okay. Yeah. I, I actually think that, it wasn't my first. It was probably the second or third. I had um, Redstone Meadery prior to that, but oh. um, that was from Colorado. It's also very interesting. Uh, it's it's worth trying. Um, but Chaucer's is also found on my shelves, and it's just it's interesting. Yeah. Not a big fan. Very mass produced, sugary sweet. It, it hits the stereotype of uh, medieval fair, super sweet. Yeah. Which I'm sure some people like it. So if you like it, please don't be angry. Please don't get down in the comments and, and, and scream at us. But it's it's not, at least not my cup of tea at this point. Mm-hmm. Agreed. So um, you have, you're, you're in this discovery of, uh, well, I guess trying to find your favorite meat recipe, which is always a fun mm-hmm. thing. I really enjoy all your flavor combinations. And, and I really liked getting to, to talk to you about the how you create them because when I see your videos, I'm kind of interested in how you arrived at those points. And you clearly have a, a uh, understanding of flavor profiles enough and you have the research backing it. So it's, it's, it's nice to hear that you're, you're not just like doing what I do, which is you spin two wheels and then you're like, orange and nutmeg, here we go. So. I love those videos. Those are so good. Oh my God. I always get so excited and I'm like, what's going to happen? And then seeing you work with, what was it? Wasn't it like lime and clove or something? Was like one of your last ones. What was Li- it? I, uh, uh, um, <laughs> but was it? Um, I got to think back. Papaya and clove? No, that's I've done papaya and clove. That one's not out yet. Um, holy cow. This is terrible. I should know this. <laughs> it was like a weird... I don't know two things that you wouldn't think go together at all. Oh, pomegranate and clove. That's what it was. Yes. And then it was like actually pretty good. I'm and like, it, surprisingly, it, that was one that I, I'm always shocked with those. Um, I have a whole other series. I'll, I'll tell you when we get off this, because I don't want to spoil it just yet. I still got still got some things to do. I'll, I've got some things hiding back here that I can show you that are um, cool. for a future project. But those are fun. And the, those are not, to me, recipe creation. They're just like the playground. Like, let's see, let's see what happens. I love that. Which, which is fun. I enjoy, I enjoy it quite a bit. But I'm also, um, a, I have like such a weird mead scientist brain. Like, I get way too much joy out of like A-B testing. It's, it's weird at this point. <laughs> we all have our things. I, yeah, you got to have something. You got to have something to pursue, at least. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah, I'm just obsessed with flavors. Well, I I, guess. That's a great thing to be obsessed with. I'm just obsessed with it. Yeah. So. Okay, so we're entering, well, I say entering. We are, uh, what, four or five months away from a major holiday. You know, we're getting Thanksgiving, Christmas mm-hmm. time. Do you have any any big plans you're willing to share for for holiday meads, whether it be those or even just any holiday you can think of? I do have a mead planned, and 
Oh my god, I still have like cranberries frozen from last fall. <laughs> ah. I've been planning this mead for a while and I just haven't done it yet, you know? So I got inspired when I made cranberry sauce and uh-huh. it was really good. And I used, I used, um, oh, cuties. I use those little mandarin cuties ah. and cranberries. And I think I had like an orange, you know, so it's sort of a little bit of mix. And then you just put a ton of sugar in there and then you cook it down. And it was so good that I was mm. like, maybe this can be a mead. Yeah. I don't know if I would want that in primary or secondary yet. Mm-hmm. Or if I would maybe put some cranberry juice in primary and then make my <laughs> like cranberry sauce, cranberry yeah. orange sauce. And then add it in a secondary to kind of extract more of that sweet flavor. That's interesting. Yeah. I don't know how uh, you do that. I don't know. Oh, well, I've seen people like put jams and stuff in their mead. So I'm like, this is kind of like. Well, yeah, that a, definitely works. But yeah, like it's not a jam, but it's a cooked thing in sugar and water. Uh-huh. So I, uh, I don't know this for a fact, but um, I think cranberry, one thing to watch out for, has uh, alters the pH balance of some of these things. And so you have to watch that only for the yeast so that like if you were to do it primary, I do think that it becomes a little bit more of a game that it has a funkiness to it. That's, that is my little understanding of cranberry. So that's just a forewarning. Um, I, I need to do more research on that. So. I'll take a look. Yeah, because I've been wanting to uh, do something with cranberries for a while. I just haven't, you know? Yeah. I don't well, know. What about, I mean, what about you? Oh, holiday meads. Um, I, I've been trying to... I've already done the peppermint mead thing. I'm, I'm on version four now, and I'm doing one more video for it that's like a beginning to end. So I don't know if that video will come out closer to Christmas time, but uh, I have that one. Um, I have somewhere in my world, I have a whole other five pound bag of candy canes I'm going to do something else with. And I would love to experiment with roasted uh, cacao nibs and the candy canes um, to see if that would pair well together. Mm-hmm. Chocolate mint. Mm-hmm. I so love that. That's, that's probably my next attempt. It's not too far from the peppermint field. I've already done peppermint and it's honestly very good so Mm -hmm. that's probably my my next big holiday one um i wish i could say i'm planning more of those fun holiday ones but i end up just spending so much time on my series of things that i'm like i don't know i haven't uh i I just haven't thought about it that much so yeah i would like to do like a methaglin sort of a mulled wine type of thing oh yeah I tried to that the sizer recipe I told you about. Um, mm-hmm. I tried to heat that one up. It was like a ten percent or something like that. And I learned that you cannot just heat up any meat and call it mold. You kind of have to be a little bit intentional. I think you have to be intentional with your flavor combinations because I heated that one up and it was just awful. So. <gasps> Oh. I don't know what that means for for recipe creation, to be honest with you. I, I can't give you any hint, but uh, I do need to do more digging to figure out how you adapt a recipe to be heated up. Hmm. I'm, sure, I'm sure Reddit has lots of things about it. Probably. <laughs> You're probably right. Reddit, that's the go-to <laughs> place. If you ever want to uh, learn something about a mistake you made or just have a question, somebody's done it on there. That's pretty crazy. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know how much time you spend on Reddit, but it is it is a little wild. It's a great oh, place, gosh. but there's a lot going on there. I'm not there too often. I'm, I'm there when I'm looking up something very specific. And mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, okay. Someone did something with that. Yeah. And it worked or it didn't work. Yeah, I... Uh, well, I would suggest anybody to who's interested in me making to get on those avenues, not only Reddit, but... Um, I know I have a discord. I know that you're, I don't know about your channel, what kind of community stuff you have, but um, 
if you if you are interested in meet communities, there's lots of avenues to get involved. So, I uh, I would recommend that. So, what are some things? Wait. Go ahead. Wait, you have a Discord? I do your... have Discord. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, sh I'm not on it. I'll have to send you the link. Yeah. Okay, I but need it. I I will send that to you. So, um, you know, I'm sure it'll be down in the description of this video for anybody else who wants to join me too. But I'll send it to you. What are some things that we can um, look forward to from your channel for the next weeks, months, so on? Well, right now I'm kind of behind on videos. So I still have some I need to edit and I schedule things out very consistently. So like every mm -hmm. Thursday at 11 in the morning, a video is going to drop. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm probably like a month behind. So okay. it's going to be some wrapping up there are more tasting videos um, like the rosemary raspberry that blows up <laughs> everywhere. That is actually, it's pretty funny. I laughed at myself a lot. <laughs> I have to say. Oh, I've been there. Oh, it's... it's yeah. So there's that. Um, I did some tasting videos with my cousin. That will be fun because she is a wild, but as far as new things coming out in the future, there's a video, uh, well, I guess it's a mead, mead and a video that I need to make. I have everything for it, except the almonds. So this is mm. super experimentational for me. Uh huh. I couldn't really find a whole lot about almond and you have to be careful with how you put it into your meat or it'll come out really bitter and gross. And so oily. I found that you need to like blanch them and do this thing. And some people have had good luck. Others haven't blah, blah, blah. So anyways, almonds, okay, rose petals and rose hips. So that sounds almond, really good. An almond rose mead, probably with, well, maybe with orange blossom honey. I'm not sure which honey I'm going to use. Maybe clover because the flavors are going to be so delicate. I don't want them to be overrun by mm -hmm. the honey. Uh, yeah. So that's interesting. Something that's I love that. Totally different avenue from, you know, cause so often I work with fruit. Yeah. I guess rose tips are fruit technically. They're a rose kind fruit. I, I they're like, like spices to me. They're, I don't know. I have a hard time being like, that's a fruit. Even yeah, though it's it like is. So, cause some people call it a fruit and then other people are like, no, the spice. It just yeah. depends. Either it's, way. Yeah. Well, that sounds really interesting. That's awesome. Well, I, I know that. Um, I can personally say that I enjoy your, your channel quite a bit and I love all the flavor combinations that you create and uh, quite your honesty with things as well. And, and when things work and when things are, <laughs> you know, things happen, I think that's important that we be transparent. Mm -hmm. and I have no doubt that your audience appreciates um, hearing those things from you as well. So yeah. I, I've enjoyed getting to chat with you and I know that people can easily find you. By, by looking up Faye Wood Mead. Um, I know you have a YouTube channel, obviously. Do you do Instagram, anything like that? I have an Instagram and that's it. <laughs> okay, that's great. That's great. <laughs> my, um, my Instagram, yeah, it's just Faye Wood Mead. I basically like took my personal Instagram and changed the name. Okay. So there's, there's a lot of stuff on there has nothing to do with my channel but okay. i you know i do post pretty mead photos and then uh pictures of my pets mostly so there's that that's all you need in life is mead <laughs> and pets so that's yeah. perfect well thank you so much for your time i appreciate you uh taking time away from uh, from videos and family and everything else you could be doing um I, I hope that i can send people your way if people are interested in following um amanda in her mead adventures uh go check it out there's links down in the, the description again you can also just look up baywood mead if you are the type to not click on the description links so um but amanda thank you so much for your time this has been a blast Yay, thank you so much for having me. I uh, look forward to everything you're going to make in the future. Yay, thank you. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. <laughs>